<clears throat> right, hello everybody uh, for the second Wolves Wednesday. Um, so there's quite a lot has happened since last week's stream. Uh, of course, uh, yesterday's big news, Jean Moutinho coming in. And then, of course, today the big news about Barry Douglas uh, possibly going to Leeds. We'll have a little chat about that in a minute. Hello to the people who are just coming on now. Hello, how do? Hope you're enjoying the slightly better picture as well this week. Um, got myself a new webcam. If you just pop it there, like that, lovely. <clears throat> Barry's a loss, says Charles Lee. Uh, it's a difficult one. There's been a lot of conversation about it on Twitter already and in the comments of the video that I've just done now. Um, I, th I think in the context of the whole team, uh, I think that he's um, he's an important part of that team. And if you think about the assists that he provided last season, he um, I think that will be replaced uh, by either this Johnny or by, you know, Moutinho can take free kicks and things like that. So it's going to be slightly different. I don't know whether the Zinchenko uh, deal is still on. I'll have to wait and see about that. So Tim Nash, apparently, so thank you, Shiv. Uh, as Tim Nash has said that because he wasn't good enough defensively for the Premier League, which I have been saying for the last uh, couple of months since the end of the season. But I don't, I don't know whether that is is true. I mean, I'm not a footballing expert by any stretch of the imagination, but I did think that a few times last season that he was caught out by powerful, pacey right wingers, and unfortunately, I think that's probably. That's probably why he could be on the way out. I think he's lack of pace, I think. Vinagre only okay last season, so let's hope so. Uh, well, let's come back to Vinagre just for a second there. He um, He's still so young that he's going to be an amazing player in a couple of years' time. I think if he gets in the gym, if he works hard uh, and things like that, he will be one of the top, top players in the Premier League, I think, in his position. I can see him pushing forward a little bit more. I think I've said that in the past as well, about him being um, a little bit like Gareth Bale, strengthening and moving forward, perhaps. Josh Downs says, I think this is a better move for Douglas. I feel he would have ruined his reputation with Wolves fans because he's not good enough for the Premier League, but he's a top championship player he is a top championship player uh think about 15 16 assists last season uh really really good championship left back probably the best championship left back somebody already has mentioned uh somewhere else about um possibly Teles, alex Teles, uh portuguese obviously left back or oh, sinchenko could come in still uh there's a lot of question marks still, but there's still two or three weeks in there until the start of the season, so that there'll be some movement, certainly. Four goalkeepers now. Is that too many? So we've got Ruddy, uh, Norris, Patricio, who's... Oh, that's Sondergaard, is he? I wouldn't take him as a... I wouldn't say that he was a fourth first-team goalkeeper. I think we've got three pretty good first-team uh, choices, options. But Goyne is at, on loan at um, Plymouth at the moment. He's, in fact, broken his ankle today. Uh, so he's out for a while, but he's not, he's not, he wouldn't be with us anyway this season. He's out on loan at, uh, at Plymouth. So he's not going to be, he wouldn't be part of the Wolves squad this season. We need a centre half, Jordan Lawrence. I absolutely agree. Um, I think we've. Sh I'm I'm looking forward to um, seeing Wolves play tonight. It's the first time I've will have seen them in the flesh since the Sunderland game at the end of last season. Um, so I'm looking forward to seeing how they set up. 
and how perhaps they've changed. I know that they're training this morning. There's been pictures of João Moutinho training um, with them for the first time. So hopefully he gets a little run out today as well. But it's also going to give us a chance to see. <clears throat> I think I think the idea of having these two friendlies really local against Stoke and against Derby this week is to get them training and then get them into a game and sort of see to build that fitness a lot and to get them playing uh, as much as they can and see uh, see how it gets on. Let's have a look what we've got going on in the chat now. Rashford's been mentioned there. Hello, Ruby, Luke, Hayley Kennedy. Uh, Andre Silva doesn't think it's going to happen. Possibly not. Uh, why for Pepe to retire and sign his regen? What does that even mean? Uh, I th some people have mentioned Pepe as well. I really don't like him. I think he's a really ugly, horrible player and a cheat and a diver and a, all sorts of nasty things about him. But if he's on your time, if he's on your team, I think he's. Uh, I think we might like him. Douglas is 29 with one year left on his contract. Five million is great business. I completely agree there, Oliver. I think that's... The Fosun have always... They've always talked about them improving uh, the... Improving what they've... Their assets and sort of, imp you know, getting stuff back on their investments and signing... Uh, signing Douglas for a million or one and a half million last year, selling him for five million. It's amazing. And if you think about what Villa fans were saying this time last year when we'd signed Douglas uh, and they'd signed John Terry and they thought that what are we doing signing somebody from Turkey? Well, we ended up with one of the best providers of goals uh, in the championship and they turned it with a croc. I uh, I think it's a bit early to comment on Zinchenko and whether he or not he's good enough at left wing back. Um, he's he's still such a young player. I think he can play in such a variety of positions as well across sort of the left side and in uh, the middle of the park. Apparently, as an attacking mid, so it's interesting to see if we do get him or if you know what happens there. I don't. I really don't know. Do you think that Douglas was signed with Leeds? Uh, I think it seems to be a deal that would fit. I think Leeds have been quite ambitious this season and looking to to push for promotion as they as they always do. But I think that they they lack in they lacked a bit of creativity. They lacked a bit of sorry, it's my phone. Lacked quite a lot, I think, last season. And hopefully, uh, hopefully for them, Douglas will uh, provide them with a little bit more. Girls from Martins, somebody's just said there, has joined Atletico. Right, so Shiv's just asked there, uh, who who do you think the three players which Wolves are Wolves are chasing? So there's three Wolves, three players that Wolves are chasing. Uh, I think f from various rumblings on Twitter and things, uh, Marcus Rashford could genuinely be a bit of a target, perhaps on loan. For Wolves, I think that would be that would be something that would excite Wolves fans, and I think it's something that Rashford needs as well. He needs to be playing first, uh, first choice striker every game, and uh, I'd love him as one of them. Adama Traore as well could possibly be another one who comes in. Uh, it'd be interesting to see if that happens. Uh, Nevers and Moutinho, people are mentioning down there. Yeah, uh, Jordan, as you just pointed out there, we do need English players as well to come into the team. 
because they're there's that slight I think we need eight homegrown players. I'm not quite sure that we've got that at the minute, but uh Rashford would certainly help in add <laughs> in adding to that. Bye. Ruby Luke Haley. Bye bye. Uh Rafa Mia's gone, yeah, to Grand Canary, I think it is. It's a strange one. Um but yeah, it almost definitely means that we're signing another striker. Uh yeah, I can't see Rashford happening either. I think it'd be it would be an unreal signing if we were to manage to sign him permanently, but I can't see that happening. I think if it was if it was gonna happen, it it would be um it would be a, a loan signing, I think. I, do, I can't see United wanting to to sell such a young and hot prospect uh, for him. How am I getting to Stoke? Drive in. What would be a good striker to sign for Wolves? Uh, Mbappe. Messi. Ronaldo. I don't know. I think Andre Silva, I think, is possibly the most likely. Uh We'll see. Do you think we need a physically strong, tough centre half, or will Joe? You don't mean centre half, there, do you? If you mean centre mid, uh, I th I can see them signing somebody like that because it just gives us another option. Um, it it'll say, you know, we've got the the style of those two of, of Matinho and Neves, and then we'll have a bit of a hard case a bit of a bouncer who will who will just um sort of look after it but i i said yesterday i think on a on a talking wolves video about how they could possibly play with three in midfield and have sace sit slightly deeper than uh Moutinho and neves who can they can provide the balls forward and sace can provide that bit of protection but we'll we'll see how that we'll see how it goes i think I would be trying different things now in pre-season because we saw last year a number of times that w when Wolves were behind or when they, when they were really chasing the game, which is only once or twice against Nottingham Forest and Villa, uh, they weren't able to change their formation effectively. So that's what they need to be practising now in this pre-season to make sure that they've got um, different options and different ways of playing because we really lacked that um, that last year. If a phobie scores a hat trick tonight, yeah. <laughs> uh, somebody just mentioned there about Sace possibly playing in the back three. That's been mentioned quite a lot, I think, by um, a number of people. Um, so, yeah. Would you take one Yama and Welbeck? I don't like Danny Welbeck. Um, and I never have. I, he's not a good enough striker for me. He doesn't score enough goals. He doesn't make enough chances. He doesn't get himself into enough good areas. Um, so, yeah, I, I wouldn't have him. Wanyama, though, uh, I'm not quite sure of how old he is. I think we looked yesterday. He was about 28, something like that, 29. So he's a, he might be a decent signing, but he's, I don't know, he's not... Um, I don't know. I don't know whether how he would... Fit in because you have to assume that Neves and Moutinho would play would start every single game, and it would mean us changing our formation a little bit. I think. <clears throat> yeah, Vin, uh, the Van Agre price tag there. I think it was was it Tim Nash or Tim Spears, one of the two Tims, this morning put it up that Van Agre had only cost two or three million. I think when we were speculating about it earlier in the season, that we thought he was going to be upwards closer to ten million. Um, so that. I think that's a great piece of business, really, for the for the potential that he's got. Um, I think that he's he's really really good um, good player. Triore or Cav? I think purely just for the fact that I've seen him a lot this season or oh, last season. Uh, Cavaliero, I think I'd have over Triore. I think he he's had he had spells in the game against against us. Uh, around Easter time, Traore, that he really panicked us and he really scared us. But I think, really, uh, I think Cavaliero <coughs> threatens 
opposition, I think, a little bit more than uh, to a more consistent basis, at least. When do you think our next signings will be, excluding Johnny? There's quite a few questions coming up there. Can you imagine Troyer and Costa on the wing? No one would catch them. I think all we need now is a right centre-back. Anyone know any links? Personally, I, th I could see Ryan Bennett starting like he played most of last season. I think he's perfectly capable of starting in that uh, in that position there. So we'll see. We'll see. It'll be interesting to... Patricia, more value for money than Alisson. Uh, definitely. <clears throat> I mean, particularly if we... If we end up paying, I think it's, it was rumoured earlier on when he first signed that it was going to be about 18 million. Now it's upwards of 38 million or something. But we're going to be paying half, at the very most, we're going to be paying half of what Liverpool played for Alisson. And he, I think he's as good, if not equally as good. What? He's as good, if not a little bit better than. Uh, Alison, he's a little bit um, more experienced as well, so that would be uh, good. We're and Undy played against us on the fourth. Well, he, he could do. He's a Villarreal player. Uh, also, Santi Cazorla could be playing against us. I think he, he does he play for Villarreal now? And he's uh, been injured for a couple of years. Um, yeah, 600 days, I think it was, since his last game before he played the other day. So that's uh, some recovery from him. I think at some point as well, they were, thought they might have to amputate his leg. So he's got an amazing uh, recovery, really. Let me just, just try and interact with you all. There's so many people here on this stream now. Can you all just drop a like on the, on the stream just for a just for a second to see how many people are really engaged in this now and see how quickly it goes up and share it as well to all the people you're friends with uh, on Facebook, on Twitter and whatever. Let's see if we can get upwards of a uh, hundred people in here. That'd be amazing. <coughs> the likes are streaming in now. Thank you. Lovely. Wow. Uh, where will Wolves finish next season? I think, with the signings that we've made uh, already, I could th before the summer even started, I, I was pretty convinced that we'd finish around about tenth. And now, um, now, I I can't see any reason why we couldn't finish in the top six. I think some of the signs that we've made, Patricio and Moutinho in particular, they are top six signings. I mean, if if. Tottenham or if Liverpool were to sign those two players, they wouldn't look out of place in those teams and they are without doubt going to finish in the top four or five. <clears throat> I think we just need to perhaps, as has been mentioned a lot in the in the um in the chat there, that uh we need a striker and we need a, another centre back. But there's still two, three weeks left of the uh, of the transfer window. So hopefully we can add those in and just just bang on the door of the top six. I think that would be that'd be such an amazing achievement for a team that's come straight up. Um but I think it's perfectly possible. And as well, I really, really want to see us win a trophy. Um I think I think we're gonna need, we need to see how the season starts. Um and if we're looking comfortable in terms of um, in terms of staying in the league by Christmas time, I think there's no reason to just go for the FA Cup, try and win the FA Cup. I think the the League Cup's quite a difficult one to win because of when it is in the in the calendar. But the uh, the FA Cup will be superb. How much would you sell Neves for? I wouldn't accept any less than about 60 million, I think, at the moment. He's, um, I think pe people were worried, and rightly so, at the end of last season about whether or not he would stay. Uh, but he's he's gone from being, or oh, will he stay, to being just, we're building the team around him. We're building the team around. 
Well, I don't know. I think it probably is all around cost. Uh, cost. If you look at this time last year, it was all around Costa. Now this year, it's build, building all around Neves. But I think Costa's going to have a much better season uh, than than he did last season. I think he was so impacted by his um, injury from the previous season and his ankle op operations and stuff that he needed to have. Um, the way he ended last season was superb, and I really, really hope that he carries on the way he finished. I think that he'd be he'd be an amazing um, player. A couple of questions there. When will the shirt numbers be released? I think usually they're about a week or so before the season. Uh, it could be later though this this time because well, the season starts on the 11th of August, isn't it? And if uh, the transfer window closes on the 9th of August, so it could be around about, around about then. could be about the 1st. I'm not quite sure. Would Carl Akimi stay the number one? I would hope so. I think just as a gesture for him to be on the on the back of the programmes and stuff like that every week, I think it would be, be a nice thing to do. Uh, will Connor Cody ever play for England? Well, he was mentioned, wasn't he, by Gareth Southgate at the end of last season. And it was that if Connor Cody can play consistently well in the Premier League, and if Wolves can push for the top, top half, top six, top eight of the uh, Premier League, then Cody would be considered for an England squad. I can't see him being a regular now, particularly with the way that Stones, Maguire, and Walker and a couple of the others played in the World Cup. I think it, it took a lot of um, it took a lot to displace any of those players there. <clears throat> Who'll be our top scorer this year? Uh, I think Jota is going to have a a really good season. I think he found the championship a challenge because of all the physicality of it and how difficult it was and how different it was to uh, the Portuguese league and the Spanish league. Uh, but I think he's going to have more space and he's going to have the chance to be more creative and more exciting and score. Um, and score I, 15 goals, I think, Jota. Which player in our current crop would you say is most likely to win a World Cup? Age and nationality are uh, obviously important. Um, I think Ruben Neves. I think whether it's a little bit of bias on our part now uh, because we've got so many Portuguese players in our team, but I think Portugal, in the way that they're building um, the whole country and their football, they've got a decent crop of young players coming through now. If you see Neves and Jota and Vinagre as part of that, then you add that to Ronaldo, what will he be in the next World Cup? 36. Moutinho, 35. So there's the, Patricio will be 35 as well. So there's a decent balance there between experience and youth. And I don't know, it's going to be, it'll be interesting. But I think if anybody's going to win the World Cup from our current squad, it's going to be the Portuguese boys and Neves. Is Jimenez good enough? I don't know. I'll tell you after tonight. I haven't seen him play yet. The only time I've seen him play was um, coming on against Germany, excuse me, in the World Cup for 10 minutes or so. He's, uh, so I'm looking forward to tonight seeing him, seeing Moutinho and seeing uh, Patricia as well playing. So I'll, I'll let you know a little more detail in my review that should be out uh, after the game. I think Bonatini will have a better season as well. I think he's had, he had quite a disrupted season. I think he was injured for a little part around Christmas time, which we didn't know about with his shoulder. Um, but as well, He's more settled here now. His family has come over with him and things like that. So he's, he'll be um, he'll be right. <clears throat> Can't wait for Ricardson to be in Bolly's back pocket come match day. Think about that as well. Fifty million pounds for Ricardson, who hasn't scored since December or something, ages and ages ago. And now we've signed Moutinho, who Everton were after years ago, signed for ten percent of what they paid for Ricardson. Score tonight, Tom. Uh, I'm hoping for a Wolves win, obviously. Uh, but Stoke are obviously one week ahead of their preparations for the season as their season starts on the 4th. So they might be a little bit more ready for it 
um, than us. But there's three good fixtures coming up now. We've got um, Stoke, Derby, and then uh, Villarreal. Three really big challenges. Uh, so 